Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, glory be to Jesus. I want to welcome you this evening to Shaping Your Destiny with Charismatic Impact for Christ Ministry, where God is restoring the hopeless, shaping destiny and meeting real needs. When I talk about real needs, I'm talking about your needs. Your needs are real, and God will meet your needs. I want to welcome you tonight, and I'm trusting that God will speak to you specifically because God has got your name on his heart, and he knows you by your identity, and he knows everything concerning you, and he's got you in mind, and he's got your needs also in mind, and he's a God that will meet your needs. But tonight, we're going to trust God that he will deal specifically with certain things that are in the way, and I want to help you understand things that are in the way so that while God is dealing with them, or God will help us deal with those things so that in this year, you will have a fruitful life. God has something to give you, and it's a fruitful life, and I'm trusting that you will be blessed. I'm going to be talking to us this evening about behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Whenever there is maybe filming going on, or like now I'm in the studio, but you really don't know what is behind the scenes until you come to the studio, and then you will see how behind the scenes is like. Sometimes in life there is a behind the scene, not just what is presented, but behind the scenes of what is being presented. And I'm trusting God that we have a peek while God rolls away the curtain and have us peek into what's going on behind the scenes. If you're ready with me, close your eyes and let us pray, trusting God, because prayer is good. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to someone who is listening today, someone needs a touch from you, someone wants you to meet them. Spirit of God, touch that one that is yearning for you, Some, that one that is asking questions, answer their questions. Break down every door, every barrier, and release someone in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For some past weeks now, dearly beloved, I've been talking about altars, and I want to deal with the altar series so that I can help someone. Now, I cannot, because I'm on live TV, I, I cannot effectively deal with it like I want to deal with it because this series or this altar requires that you and I at times must sit down, you and I must engage in prayer, or I must pray for you, or must counsel you, or advise you what to do. And so all of this cannot be done like, like in the studio. But my no telephone number is there. The church address is there. You are more than welcome. Call us. My assistants are waiting for you. If you call us, they will take your name and, take your, you, and ask you what their issue is. And then when I finish right from live TV, I'll come and I'll call you and then we'll have a chat. I promise I'll call you. Sometimes we, when I call some people, we stay on the line for a good number of minutes, like sometimes 45 minutes and all of that. I take time to deal with people's issues. So, but on, on, on air, I can't do that. I will just pray for you for two minutes and it will be done with. And, but when we go off behind the scenes, I can help you even more. So just make sure you get the tef telephone number and call us and we'll be helping you. If those of you that want to pay us a visit, I believe you should do that because God will bless you. Now we're dealing with behind the scenes and concerning the altar services. When I started the altar services, I started it as a test in the house of the righteous and from that we're going into behind the scenes. Now from the book of Judges chapter number 6 from where we've been, always been uh, eating the solid food of God from Judges chapter number 6 from verse 20, 25 going to 26. God instructed Gideon to take a bull, actually two bulls, uh, one belonging to his father. And God said to him that Gideon, you must go and tear down the altar of your father. 
That was a specific instruction that God gave to Gideon. Because Gideon had been asking God a question, and this is the question Gideon asked God. He said, God, we have heard many testimonies about your ability, that you are the God of deliverance, you are the God of provision, you are the God of a breakthrough, you are the God of this, and you are the God of that, and you can do all these things. You can heal the sick, you, you, you raise the dead, you blind eyes open, you make a way where there seems to be no way. We've been hearing all these things about you, but right now, right now, I'm not seeing anything that I have been hearing about you. And these are questions that believers and people are asking. They're asking, God, are you real? God, do you exist? Is the power of God real? Is God real? Because if God is real, I don't understand why I'm calling on him, and God, you don't seem to answer. This is the same question Gideon posed to the angel when the angel came. He said, I have heard a lot about God, but God doesn't seem to come through. Or I'm not experiencing what I hear. Many of you have been hearing many things concerning God, but the things you are hearing, you are not experiencing. It seems as though people are lying when they tell you that God is a miracle-working God, and you need God to make a miracle for you, and nothing is happening. You've been hearing that God heals the sick, yet you are sick and you're trusting God for healing, and it looks like nothing is happening. Is God a, healing, a healer or he is not a healer? Has he anointed his servants or has he not anointed his servants? Child of God, many of the times, sometimes, what is behind the scene is not just uh, the prayer that's been offered or it's just not the result of you being sick. There is something connected to your sickness. There is something that wants you to repeat family pattern. There is something that wants you to repeat what your mother re uh, fell in, the results that were happening in her life. Not the positive results, but the negative results. I'm talking about the things that happen to your parents negatively. It's also coming down to you. You can tell parents, as you look at your child, that some of the things you went through, Father, is happening to your son. Why is it happening to your son? Especially the negative things. Not the blessings, not the positive things, not the good things, but it seems like the negative things are the ones that are gravitating towards your child. What is going on? When it's like that, there is something behind the scene that wants your children to repeat everything that happened to you. And that is what we must deal with. Unless we deal with that, it doesn't matter the amount of prayer you do. If the altar is not broken, if the thing behind the scene is not destroyed, your children is bound to repeat the mistakes that you repeated. That your children are bound to follow all those kind of mistakes that will set them back and not give them progress in life because the altars are responsible. The behind the scenes are responsible. And so Gideon is asking all these questions, God, what is happening and why are you not answering? When this angel of God came and received Gideon's offering, the next thing is that the angel of God unveiled. He, he pulled back the curtain to explain to Gideon the reason why he feels like he's a mighty man, but nothing is happening in his life, and why God could not do a lot, even though Gideon was a mighty deliverer. You could have a great destiny, a destiny of great hope, and yet you will not be scratching your destiny because something behind the scenes is stopping your destiny. You could have had a great marriage, but in your family, you are not supposed to have a great marriage. Why? Because the altar is responsible of producing decay. It's responsible for, for reducing disaster. It's responsible for re producing um, people who will not have a successful marriage. And that is what the altar is responsible for. The altar is also, can also be, res be responsible for making sure 
that you will not have any financial liberty, financial freedom. It doesn't matter how much you earn. It doesn't matter what job you get. You will be moving from job to job. You will not be going up. You will be going more down. If you did have any money, all kinds of problems will come your way in order that by the end of the day, you will have no money. You could invest like everybody else is investing. But when you invest, something happens to your investment. All of a sudden, you will lose your money while others gain success, others gain increase. The reason those things are happening is because behind the scene, there is an altar that is fighting you. And unless we deal with that altar, you will always experience the things that you are experiencing. Prayer is a source, but the altar must be broken. And I'm here to teach you how we can break the altar. Because we need to be able to break this altar. My telephone numbers are there. Make sure you do call us so that we can uh, speak with you. Make sure, too, that you pay us a visit. Charismatic Impact for Christ Ministry. The address will come on this, the screen very soon. We are in Woolwich, and we want to be a blessing to you. I believe that God anoints his servants to minister and bless you. He doesn't anoint me for my purpose or for my own good. God anoints me because of you, because you need a breakthrough, because you need some deliverance, because you need a door to open. That's the reason why God anoints me for you and not for me. And so when God instructed Gideon, saying to Gideon, here, you must break down the altars. When Gideon did that in the night, the men of the city rose up against Gideon, and they wanted to offer him as a sacrifice onto the altar. They wanted to rebuild the altar, but uh, sacrifice Gideon on the altar because he tore down the altar. Now let's go behind the scene. If you look at your Bibles and you, your Bible and you turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, I'm going to read for you from verse 18. Verse 18 says this, Look at the nation Israel. Are not those who eat sacrifices sharers in idols? Listen to this. What do I mean then? That a thing sacrificed to idol is, a, is anything, or that an idol is anything. No, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, here it is, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to become sharers with demons. Paul is advising and saying that, child of God, when the Gentiles, I mean the people who are not, covenant, who are not uh, uh, Jews or the people who were not born Jews, those who are outside the circle are, are Gentiles. And when the Gentiles were worshiping or the Gentiles seek to know a God, they did not come in contact with the God, the I am that I am. They, did not dis they were not able to discover him. So what they did was that they made idols and images that they bowed down to. And all these idols and all these images that the Gentiles made, that is the people who were without covenant, the people who were outside the commonwealth of Israel, those who were not born Jews, I'm talking about you, those of African descent, those of European descent, everyone Asian descent, I'm talking about you. People who they, they bow before idols, people who go to idol worshiping places. All of you, I'm talking about you. The scripture says that the idol that you are worshiping, there is a spirit behind the scene. It's the sacrifices you're giving to the idol. It's not the idol because the idol, the wood, the stone, uh, the image cannot eat the fruits or the sacrifices or the animal that you sacrifice to it. The idol cannot eat it. But it is a covenant between you and what is 
behind the scene of the idol, which is a demon. So Paul says there is demons behind idols that whenever someone comes to uh, the idol or comes to the altar, the demon behind comes and receives whatever offering is given to it. Those of you who uh, fellowship and worship after the true and the living God, you know that you have to also sacrifice to God. God, the I am that I am, the living God, the creator of everything, demands sacrifice from human beings. If you never sacrifice to God, God doesn't want it. Even God himself had to sacrifice his own son. So God believes in sacrifice. There is something important about sacrifice. But it is to whom are you sacrificing to? That is the question. And not everything that we sacrifice to is God. Praise the Lord. Not everyone that we sacrifice to is God. So you have to be very careful what you sacrifice to. Because what you sacrifice to, you become sharer. In other words, you become joint with the spirit that you sacrifice to. So if the spirit is not of God, you become, uh, you become connected to whatever spirit you join, you, you sacrifice to. So if you go to a good church, Bible-based church, that preach the truth, that, that talk about Jesus, that preach a balanced gospel, not a one-sided gospel, so that everybody is dumb, mature, because they're always preaching on one specific topic. I'm talking about a balanced meal. If you eat one particular meal all the rest of your life, you will grow sick. So you cannot eat the meal of deliverance all the days of your life. You will go sick. You cannot eat the meal of healing all the days of your life. You will go sick. You need a balanced diet. So when you have to go to a church that they preach a balanced diet, that means they will preach a little bit of deliverance, they will preach a little bit of healing, they will preach a little bit of hope, they will preach about the blood of Jesus, they will preach about the name of Jesus. It is out of all these messages or all this preaching that you get a balanced diet. So you cannot go to a church that preaches just one topic. So if the church only preaches money and finances, it may be good, but it's an imbalanced diet. So what will happen is that you will die and not grow because you are not getting other nutrients and you're not getting blessed from other topics. So you need a church that preaches a balanced diet. And so that is a church you need to get yourself to. And not every church subscribes itself to the living God. It does not matter what they say. You have to be able to see behind the scenes. And, and so behind the scenes matter. The, what goes on behind the scene? What is going on behind the scene? What is happening behind the scene? Uh, is there a sacrifice that is going on that you do not know? What, what is going on? You need to know all those things because we sacrifice to God. Every believer, a spirit-filled believer, every uh, a follower of Jesus Christ, you will sacrifice to God. It is your service. The Bible says this is our reasonable service. We offer our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. So sacrifice is a much needed thing that everybody must do. But if you sacrifice yourself and you don't sacrifice it to God, then who did you sacrifice yourself to? And so you need to know behind the scene. So that is, that's the reason why you should not just run anywhere. Make sure that you find out what it is behind the scene. Paul says, behind the scenes of idol worshiping, Stones behind the scenes of certain places. There are demons responsible. And the, the demons do things to capture the mindset. They do things to capture the people so the people can continually come to the place of the idol worship or come to the place of the idol or come to where the sacrifice is. If nothing happens when you go to an idol, then the people will stop going. But because the demons perform certain things or meet the needs of those that come to it, the people keep on going. 
but they are going to a demon and not to God. Hallelujah. And so here, God now instructs Gideon that you must break down the altars of your father because your father had gone to subscribe to a demon and not me. So even though he's your father, the idol that he's got in the house, the, the strange thing that he's brought into the house, it is not from me. He is he's bowing down to something strange. He, he went to somebody. He went to seek help from some strange person. They went to the bush. They went to do certain sacrifices. They came to the house. They said, bury this in the house. They said, keep this thing in the house. As long as you keep this specific thing in the house, it will bring protection to you. They told you that you must swallow this thing. And when you swallow it, it will protect you all the days of your life. All these things are contacts with demons that later on, it will make you a sharer. You will become a partaker of the demon. You, you will be linked to the demon, and the demon will have rights to you. You cannot, you cannot divorce from the demon until something is done about the covenant. Something is done about the altar. You cannot say, I don't want it anymore. It cannot happen just because you said you don't want it. it you must be able to break the contract. You must be able to break the connection between you and the demon, between you and the altar, before you go free. Many people have been praying, but they have not been taught that the altar must be broken. These altars must be broken. So God said to Gideon, break down your father's altars. But not only should you break down the altars, you must also rebuild an altar. So it's not good enough to break down the altars. If you break down the altars without building back a new altar, the old altars can be rebuilt. And they are built by the protectors of the altar. I want to talk to you a briefly about protectors of the altar. Protectors of the altar are people that are in families that are supposed to protect the family altars. If there's an altar in your father's side, there's an altar in your mother's side, believe you, child of God, there are people in the family that protect the altar. And they protect the altar and sacrifice to the altar consistently and periodically. Every other time, there must be a sacrifice put on the altar. And sometimes the sacrifices are the, the siblings that die misfortunately. And the sacrifices are people in the family that die strangely. You, you know, the sacrifices, uh, things very, very funny happens in the family. These are sacrifices that go on the altar. And as long as they go on the altar, they keep the demons' presence in the family. Or they keep the contact of the demon in the family. If you want all this broken, child of God, then there is something you have to do. There is something you have to do. Otherwise, the, the things that are happening in the family will continue to happen. The, sometimes you find out that even after much prayer, the things, the evil patterns increases even more, even while you have prayed hard. You ask yourself, why did I pray so hard? And yet all these things are, are increasing. It's because the altar is not destroyed. You are just praying. Gideon was instructed to break the altars, not just to pray. He was instructed to break the altars, not just to give an offering. An offering will not do it until the altar is broken. God is not just interested in the offering. God uses the offering to do something. So unless the altar is destroyed, the offering won't do anything. So I could ask you for an untold amount of money. And you can bring the, um, all the money you want to bring. But if the altar in your father's house, in your mother's house is not destroyed, the money you gave to me won't do nothing. The altar, child of God, needs to be destroyed. The altar must be destroyed in the house. If it's not destroyed, look around and see what is going on in the family. See what happened to your auntie is happening to you. See what the barrenness in the family, look, it's happening now. It's happening. It's happening. 
It seems like your father died a strange death. Look at your, the way your, your brother died. It's strange. Look at how he died. Look at the way, what is going on in the family. Very, very, very strange things is happening in the family. It's as the result of the altars that they are working in the family. Unless that is destroyed, people will continue to die. There is a family I know that each year a person in the family dies. Each year. Every year that comes, someone will die. And the only prayer they're praying is that God may it not be me. But somebody dies in the family. If you want to stop those things, then the altar must be broken. There is a family I know. Each time people become alcoholics. People are just becoming alcoholics. What is going on? There is an altar that needs to be destroyed, and we must do it. It's behind the scene. Paul says it's a demon responsible for what is going on, and he wants to stay in the family, but I want you to destroy it. Child of God, call me. My numbers are on the screen. Call us, and I will speak to you. Pay us a visit at our place of worship. I, we are praying and we are dealing with things because I want to help you. I'm strict, anointed to really help you. God has empowered me to help you. And I want to help you. I cannot help you if you stay at home. I can't do it. I cannot help you if you don't come where I am. I can't come where you are, but you can come to where I am.